ago in a far off place lived a handsome prince with a gloomy face for he did not have a bride oh he sighed alas and he pined alas but alas the prince couldn't find a lass that would suit his mother's pride for a princess is a delicate thing Delicate and dainty as a dragonfly's wing You can recognize a lady by her elegant air But a genuine princess is exceedingly rare On a stormy night to the castle dawn came the last the prince had been waiting for. I'm a princess lost, quoth she. But the queen was cool and remained aloof, and she said, Perhaps, but we'll need some proof. I'll prepare a test and see. I will test her thus. The old queen said, I'll place 20 downy mattresses upon her bed. And in between those 20 mattresses, I'll place one tiny pea. If the princess feels the pea, then a true princess is she. The bed was soft and extremely tall But the dainty lass didn't sleep at all And she told them so next day Said the queen, my dear, if you felt that pee Then we've proved enough of your royalty Let the wedding music play And the people shouted quietly For a princess is a delicate thing Delicate and dainty as a dragonfly's wing You can recognize a lady by her elegant hair But a genuine princess is There are many versions of the story. I sing them all. This one is the prettiest, but it's not quite accurate. I happen to know the true story of the princess and the pea for the very good reason that I was there. It was a small kingdom ruled by a talkative queen and a mute king. Ooh. But the princess in the true story was not the only girl tested. In fact, she was one of 13. 13 girls who came to the castle hoping to wed the prince, but for one reason or another were found to be unsuitable. In fact, the day I arrived at court, they were testing princess number 12. A curious quiz was in progress. Are you ready for the next question? I guess so. The next question concerns famous rulers. Are you quite ready? Uh-huh. Well then, name three kings. Is that clear? Yes. Would you repeat the question, please? <laughs> Certainly. Name three kings. Is that clear? May I take the third king first? Of course. Well then, three kings are... Is this a test? A royalty test to find out she's a true princess. King John, King Arthur, and... Does it matter if she's a true princess? Oh yes, if she's a true princess, we can all get married. King Ethelred. That is absolutely correct. She's smart, Mama. She's the best one yet. Can I marry her now, huh? Can I, Mama? Oh, uh, there's still one more question. Oh, this test isn't going to be fair. It's the law that isn't fair. Law? The marriage law. 
Throughout the land, no one may wed till Dauntless to the altar's led. Dauntless? The prince, until he gets married, none of us can. You have now reached the seventh plateau, and here is your final question. It is divided into four parts and concerns a famous man often referred to as the Knight of the Red Cross. One, what was his name? Two, what beast did he slay? Three, how many rows of teeth did the beast have and what kind? And four, what was the middle name of the daughter-in-law of the best friend of the blacksmith who forged the sword to kill the beast? Number one, St. George. Number two, the dragon. Number three, 12 rows of teeth and they were iron. And number four, would you repeat the last question, please? What was the middle name of the daughter-in-law of the best friend of the blacksmith who forged the sword who killed the beast? The middle name? The middle name. The daughter-in-law. In-law. You have 30 seconds. Oh, pass. Please, please pass. Do you speak, my lady? No, I... 20 seconds. Oh. I do wish her success. She's a pretty little thing. 10 seconds. Oh. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh. Your time is up. Too bad, my dear. Too bad. You do show a certain aptitude. But as for the true brilliance of royalty, well, I'm afraid not. <laughs> Remember, the blood will always tell, and yours didn't tell us quite enough. So, to show that there are no hard feelings, we've prepared for you a special consolation prize. <laughs> Goodbye, good luck, and go! It's nearly time for your cocoa. <laughs> oh, I liked her. So did I. Why? Must every princess get the bird? It's just absurd. I never had a test of difficult to pass. Alas. Alas, is what I lack, I lack. Alas, alas, a lack. Throughout the land, no one may wed till God the shares his man rich bed. Indeed. Ah, minstrel, you are just arrived. Oh, yes, Grand Vizier. Splendid, splendid. Watch closely. I take a perfectly plain piece of parchment with no cuts, folds, creases, or concealed corners. And... What do you want? Excuse me, Cardamon, but I have to take the minstrel to sign with the castle steward. This way, please. I'm on my way to Normandy. I won't be staying long. 
For your father's sake, I put up with a good deal from you. Never refer to me as Cardamon in court again. Just because your father and I were in show business together, don't presume. You just don't think you'll ever marry. Studley said he was thinking of proposing. Oh, Sir Harris. <laughs> my darling, you missed the test. Oh, sweet lark, and my new responsibilities as chivalric knight of the Herald keep me busy. The latest princess was a failure. No. Yes. Bad luck, but don't despair, for we have plenty of time. And if a true princess is not found in the next few months, I will go out and find one myself, or else I don't deserve to wear my spurs. Darling. My love. Do you remember the royal joust on Whit Sunday when you won those spurs? Of course. When you were called Sir Harry, the fairest and bravest knight in all the land, oh, when everyone agreed you had a brilliant future ahead of you, that you might someday become Lord Chamberlain or even Prime Minister? Well, I don't know about Prime Minister. Do you remember the picnic we all had later on the greensward with the lovely cold pheasant? Yes. And you and I wandered away from the others to climb the hill and watch the sun go down? Yes. And a lark was singing in the trees, and you said you'd remember that moment forever because the lark's song reminded you of my name. Yes, Larkin, yes. And then we watched the sun go down. Yes. Well, I'm going to have a baby. So you see, a princess for Dauntless must be found, and soon or I shall have to go away somewhere. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, darling, I'm so worried. This could ruin you and you'd never be prime minister or anything. Just say the word, Harry, and I'll go now. I'll go far away where I'll, they'll never find me. Just say the word. No, you'll stay here. Why should we both suffer all of our lives just because you had a moment of weakness? Oh, Harry. <laughs> we're none of us perfect. Everything's going to be all right. Thank you, Harry. It won't be long, it won't be long, it won't Because it can't be long before our dreams come true Because you know I don't belong And furthermore I shan't belong to anyone but you In a little while, just a little while You and I will be one, two, three, four in a little while, I will see your smile On the face of my son to be forever Hand in glove is the way I have it planned But I'll only stay in love If the glove contains your hand In a velvet gown, I'll be coming down the it's bound to seem as though the waiting's only been a little, in a little while. Have you any idea how soon, my love? November. November. <laughs> my time is at a premium, for soon the world will see me a maternal bride to be. I know I mustn't worry, Harry, still I'd wish you'd hurry, Harry, Harry, marry me. In a little while, just a little while, you and I will be one, two, three, four. In a little while, I will see your smile on the face of my son to be forever hand in love is the way I have it planned. But I'll only stay in love if the glove contains your hand. I can see it all down to every small detail. So I wish you'd look around until you would found a castle in the neighborhood for sale. your feet. And for heaven's sake, don't squint. I told you not to look at the sun. Yes, Mama. Oh, that's better. Oh. Oh. Mm. My darling boy. <laughs> oh, 
Sextimus! If I've told you once, I've told you a hundred thousand times. I will not have you running around the halls and playing these foolish games. It just isn't dignified. We are the rulers of this kingdom. And if we do not behave as rulers should, then I'd like to know who will set the proper example for the rest of the court. I mean, what is the point of being a ruler if one's not going to behave as a ruler should? Mama. Now what? Mama, when am I going to get my princess? I don't want to talk about that right now. It's nearly time for your cocoa. But, Mama, sometimes I get the funniest feeling that you don't want me to get married. Oh, don't want you to get married. Don't want you to get married? Don't this. Don't you trust me? Of course, Mama, but... Oh, then how could you say such a thing? I want you to get married. Only this morning I was saying to your father, I said, Seximus, I want that boy to get married. It just isn't normal for a boy his age to stay single. And after all, he's the prince. He's next in line to the throne. I said, don't forget that. I mean, we're not exactly the oldest people in the world, but on the other hand, we're not gonna live forever. And I just know that I'd feel much better, much easier, and much more relaxed in my mind if that boy were married and settled and set. And that is absolutely exactly verbatim what I said to your father this morning. Of course, he didn't say anything. He never does. But you know your father just as well as I do. I don't have to explain how impossible he is. But that's my cross of pain. I don't want you to worry your head one tiny bit about the fact that your father and I don't get along and never have. If he makes me miserable and makes me suffer, I just have to put up with it. And I will not allow it to affect my child's attitude toward him or me. He may be mean, stupid, dreadful, selfish, rotten man, oh, but he is your father and I want you to respect him. <laughs> There is only one person who really worries about you and really cares about your future and your health and your happiness. And that's me. I want to make myself absolutely clear. I want you to get married, but I don't want you to marry just anyone. After all, marriage is a lifetime partnership. And I would hate to see my little baby boy make the same mistake. I did and wind up miserable the way I did. <sighs> you are a prince and you must marry someone who is good enough and smart enough and most wonderful for my good, nice, beautiful baby boy. And she has to be a princess, a real, genuine princess. That is one thing I absolutely insist upon. She must be a real, genuine, bona fide princess just as I was. Oh, that's what you really want, isn't it? Someone like me. <laughs> oh, of course you do. <laughs> oh, gosh, if I were only 20 years younger. <sighs> Just remember this. You must trust me. Oh, good boy. Your Majesty, Your Highness. Hello, Harry. Don't interrupt. Hello. Well, Sir Harry wishes to speak to you, Madam. Madam, I have the honor to request a perilous labor. I wish to search for a true princess, a princess of the royal blood, one who will suit both Your Majesty and Prince Dauntless. No! Mama! No, no, no! We've been through all of the eligible girls in the neighboring kingdoms. There are none left. We'll simply have to wait until their little sisters grow up, and that will take years. But, madame, I plan to head north, over the mountains. Over the mountains? Across the Badlands. Across the Badlands. And into the marshland, where the beautiful swamp lily grows. Into the marshland? Let him go, Mama, let mind? him go. You won't find anything there but frogs, tadpoles, and weird things. Mama! You don't know what the weather there is like. 
you know how damp and foggy and humid and oppressive? Please, let him go. Gosh. Fine. Go ahead. It's your sinus now. Hooray! You've missed your cocoa, don't this? Good luck, Harry. Good luck. <laughs> don't be afraid, little Larkin. I'm going to bring back a princess who is not only a true princess, but one who will be able to pass the queen's test. I believe you. I'm not afraid. And I shan't be away long. Only fly as fast as you can, my love. We shall be waiting for you. We? No. And wear this. Next to my heart. a while I will see your smile on the face of my son to be forever hand in love is the way I have it planned but I'll only stay in love if the glove contains your hand in a velvet gown you'll be coming down the aisle and it's bound to seem as though the waiting's only been a little, in a little while. Sir Harry's perilous journey took three weeks, and the Lady Larkin had all but given up hope that he would find a true princess. Then, one sunny day, mid-April, when the crocuses were just beginning to dot the meadows, the lookout in the North Round Tower spied two distant figures approaching at full gallop. The alarm was sound. Sir Harry is back! Sir Harry is back with the new princess! Now, let's see, how does this part go in the... Hmm. On a stormy night, to the castle door came the last the prince had been waiting for. That, of course, is utterly untrue. <laughs> wasn't storming at all that night. In fact, it wasn't even night. And the princess had only looked as though she came in from a storm. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Actually, I swam the moat. <laughs> But never mind, if I just stand right here, there's a nice draft. I'll be dry in no time. Oh, look, Mama, she's all wet. You swam the moat? We tried to stop her, but she wouldn't wait for the drawbridge. You swam the moat? She seemed determined to arrive as soon as possible. We had to get a rope and pull her out. All right, I was a little anxious. My friend Sir Harry, oh, he's still out there. He told me you had an opening for a princess. Any princess. I figured the early bird. <laughs> oh. Oh. Anyways, here I am. Who's the lucky man? <laughs> hey, Nani, Nani, is it you? Hey, Nani, 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 no. Hey, Nani, Nani, is it you? Hey, Nani, 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 no. Hey, Nani, Nani, is it you? Or you, or you, or you, or. Hey, Nini, Nani, no. No, no, no! Someone's being bashful. That's no way to be. Not with me, can't you see? That I am just as embarrassed as you. And I can understand your point of view. I've always been shy. Confess that I'm shy. Can't you guess that this confident air is a mask that I wear cause I'm shy? And you may be sure, without deep I demure. Though some people I know might deny it, a bottom I'm quiet and pure. I'm aware that it's wrong to be meek as I am. My chances may pass tend to be strong, but as weak as I am, all I can do is try, God, no. 
knows I try Though I'm frightened and shy And despite the impression I give I confess that I'm living a lie Because I'm actually terribly timid And horribly shy Though a lady may be dripping with glamour as often as not She will stumble and stammer when suddenly confronted with romance And she's likely to fall on her face When she's finally face to face with a pair of pants Quite often the lady's not as hard to please as she seems Quite often she'll settle for something less The man of her dreams I'm going fishing for a mate She's going fishing for a mate I'm gonna look in every nook She's gonna look in every nook But how much longer must I wait With faded breath and hook you ask her yourself. Do you ever say anything else except you swam the moat? Do you mean to ask me to believe that you are a true princess of the royal blood and I'm actually to understand that you would have the nerve and the gall and the presumption to ask for my son's hand in marriage? Mama, may I say something? No! And do you, for one moment, actually think I would consider you suitable for any son of mine? Well, you were under a very unfortunate misapprehension, my dear. My son isn't going to marry any moat swimmer. Not while I have breath left in my body. I have not been well at all. I get these horrible shooting pains through here. Don't try and tell me it's the vapors. I've had the vapors. It's not the vapors. <laughs> Are you new here? Watch closely. I take a perfectly plain piece of parchment with no cuts, folds, creases, or concealed corners, and it's a nut house. No, 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 wait. You're the one, I guess. Sure. I'm Prince Dauntless. The drab. Well, glad to have met you. Well, please don't go. I like you. Well, everybody does. 
Well, almost everybody. Tauntless, I'd like to stay here, but I wouldn't want to come between you and your mother. Mm -hmm. So, I'll guess I'll just face the facts, cut my losses, and head back to the swamps. But I really like you. You do? Why? Well, you swam the moat. Oh, Tauntless, I know I swam the moat, but that's not the real me. I'm not like that. Actually, I'm shy! Oh, She's in the moat again. Lower the drawbridge. Are you all right? Sure. You should see her swim, Mama. She's wonderful. Uh, oh, yes, isn't she? Uh... She swam the moat. It's cold! Twice? I don't need any help. Can I marry her, Mama? No! When you marry, if you marry, you'll marry a true princess. <laughs> I have the honor to announce the arrival of Her Royal Highness the Princess Winifred. You're a little late. She's been here and gone. Gone? Yes, she's swimming on home. That, Sir Harry, is no princess. Ah, uh, but she is, Your Majesty. What? That one, you just... <laughs> on mine honor as a knight she is, I have her papers right here. Princess Winifred of Icombe Kill, guardian of the Midgard Serpent and warden of the Ragnarok Marsh Lily. The inscription on her family crest reads, Tune cede malis sed contra ad entiorito. What does that mean? Well, roughly it translates to, if at first you don't succeed, oh, try to... never mind, never mind. You see, she is a real princess. She looks like At least a test, Mama, for me. All right, she'll have her test. The wizard and I will put on our thinking caps and think of a nice fair test for her, just as we always do. And I'll prove to you that that is no princess. Once and for all. Hmm, we'll test her for... Get her by the leg! This oh. is her leg! Oh, how crude! That's not my leg! Oh, gosh. Sensitivity! She'll have her test, and she'll fail, just like all the others. Fair and square! <laughs> fail what? Every princess suing for my hand in marriage must pass a test to prove she's royalty. What kind of test? Well, it's always highly secret. Well, we'll worry about that later. Right now, I'd better get out of these wet clothes. May I show you a part of the castle on the way to your room? Sure. You're awfully nice. You're nicer. <laughs> You're good looking, too. <laughs> You're better looking and nicer, too. <laughs> well, you're a better swimmer. <laughs> I'm so excited, Sir Harry is back. Oh, yes, he is, and he's brought us a sweet princess. Have you seen her? Neither have I, but I'm sure she's as delicate as an orange blossom. And I'm to be her lady-in-waiting. Sir Harry arranged it, isn't he thoughtful? He arranges everything. <laughs> <laughs> and my father expected me to follow in his footsteps, but then I land this jester job. What's wrong? You're worried about what? Who? Some lady? Which lady? Two syllables. First syllable. Bird. Some kind of bird. Auk, bluebird, catbird, dove, eagle, finch, kiwi, lark. Lady Larkin. And a knight. Which knight? Sir Harry. Harry. <laughs> dust. Sounds like dust. Uh, lust. <laughs> Must? Must what? You're going to start all over again. She's in trouble. What kind of trouble? Big trouble. <laughs> How many syllables? 
she's going to have a baby. Does anyone else know? <laughs> Sir Harry. Does anyone know besides Sir Harry? Oh, we can keep a secret, Your Majesty. The question is, can you? We know you can't talk, but you managed to communicate. We have only two voices among us, and yet there's a third voice, a voice in disguise. You'll be hearing a trio and not a duet if you listen with both of your eyes. Kindly, with both of your eyes. We produce a unique and remarkable blend When we raise our three voices on high We're in perfect accord from beginning to The king and the minstrel and I Yet if one of our trio should ever depart Then the others would languish and die We're like three different people with only one the king and the jester and I Sing hey nani nani hey nani nani hi Diddle diddle Strike up a tune on the Oh the bishop declares our behavior is screwed As he piously looks to the sky Cause when we go in swimming we always go Say the king and the jester The king and the minstrel Oh, the vinter makes wine from the grapes that he grows. Twenty barrels were lost last July. Where they went is a secret that nobody... Oh, the cook claims she's missing one chocolate cream roll and a fish that was ready to fry. Guess who's dining on pastry and filet up? Sing hey nani nani hey nani nani needle and dimple Crash us a clash on the <laughs> It's been said of our king that his morals are loose But the queen is much worse on the sly Well what's good for the gander is good for the Say the king and the jester The king and the minstrel Well said Son, from every catch belly princess that comes along. Now I'm surrounded by spies and traitors. No, no, no. More. <sighs> Whom can I trust? Me. No one. And now I have another one of those princesses to deal with. And I'm in no mood to sit for hours in the stuffy chamber and rack my brain over a test for that girl when I'm not feeling at all well. But that's the way Dauntless wants it, so that's the way it'll have to be. She'll have her test. Well, her papers seem to be in order. Uh, I know. And the worst part of it is that the foolish boy actually seems to like the girl. So, we must think of a test. That sounds fair, seems fair, looks fair, and isn't fair. But exactly what? When you got the idea of testing her for sensitivity, I could have applauded right out loud. But what? Table manners? No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, hmm, that's not good enough. <sighs> sensitivity, sensitivity. Sensitivity, sensitivity, I'm just loaded with that. In this one word is the epitome of the aristocrat. Sensitivity, 
sensitive soul and sensitive stomach, sensitive hands and feet. This is the blessing, also the curse of being that we lead. Common people don't know what exquisite agony is. Suffered by gentle people like me. Just get your hands off me. Think up a tricky test for that wretched monk swimming princess. May I suggest? Maybe we ought to. Don't take all my time. Not well. I need my rest. Not that I'd ever sleep on that lumpy mattress. Oh gosh, my back. Sensitive at the bane of royalty, that bed's a torture rack. Oh, I hate to sound grumpy, but my nerves are so jumpy. I am sure I could feel any lump, even if it were under the mattress and small as a pea. That's the answer! Under the mattress, we'll test her tonight. One tiny pea beneath one thick downy mattress. Oh gosh, you're bright. Any genuine princess would feel it. If she doesn't, she's poo. Get the tiniest pea and order one mattress. No, make it two. Why not five? Ten, I think, would be plenty. Better still make it twenty. And to play it safe in the event, even that's not enough to ensure that she sleeps. We'll give her a soothing sedative, won't we? You can whip up a drink. Something stunning, oh, but you're devilish. I love the way you think. She's insensitive, so insensitive. She'd fall asleep, no doubt. Gosh, but you're clever, brilliant, a genius. You are divine. Get out! Certainly feels good to get into dry clothes. This old dress is just soaked. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Your Highness, the king has requested to meet the young lady. Why? He's never asked before. He heard she swam the moat. Is your father anything like your mother? Because if he is... Oh, no. My father is silent. He... I'd love to meet him. <laughs> Papa, this is Princess Winifred. Your Highness, the... Your Highness, the King welcomes you. And he's asked me to say he hopes you'll get 100 on the test tomorrow. Ah, well, thanks. My father never touches his crown to his heart unless he really means it. Alas, madam, the king's mute, or else he would speak for himself. He is still under a curse cast by which long ago the curse says, King Sextimus will never talk until the mouse devours the hawk. Till the mouse devours the hawk? Well, can't you just get a big mouse and a little hawk and... Oh, we tried that once, <laughs> but the mouse got scared and ran away, and the hawk bit daddy. <gasps> oh, no, 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 it's okay. Well, just let me get this test under my belt and we'll figure something out. Don't you worry. It certainly has been a pleasure meeting His Majesty. A short while ago, I had the pleasure of meeting Her Majesty. <laughs> now that is a nice man. Uh, Your Majesty, I think you ought to speak to Prince Dauntless very soon about, you know. About what? Uh, your father feels that he's been neglecting his duty. And now that you're old enough to get married, he thinks you ought to have a little chat, man to man. About things? You mean now? Well, the king says it would be better to wait until later. There are still a few facts he needs to look up. I certainly do like almost both your parents, Dauntless. Well, we want you to feel at home here. We know it's not what you're used to. Well, it is a 
little hard making the adjustment to dry land and everything. You must feel like a fish out of water. As a matter of fact, I do. You see, where I come from, we don't have any dry land. Oh, some of the poor people do. But the nobility all live right in the swamps with their servants and pets. Oh, do you have pets? Lots. Dogs? Frogs. <laughs> I come from the land of the foggy, foggy dew. Like walking through glue. The swamps of home are brushed with green and gold at break of day. My soul is the beauty of the fog In my memory the magic of the mud I know that blood is thicker than water But the swamps of home are thicker than blood Where'er I roam, my heart grows dank and cold You do? All right. <laughs> no, Dauntless. It's bad luck to see too much of the bride before the wedding. Oh. <laughs> Your Highness, the ladies and I would like to show you the dresses now. Sure. This is the latest thing we have in from Spain. They do such lovely work, don't you think? Notice the fullness in back and the window sleeves that cut right down to the elbows. Oh, and it looks so lovely on it. It would look great on you, don't you think so, Lady H? It would look stunning. Perhaps your highness would like to look in a mirror. Does her highness have a favorite color? Well, back home, we wear a lot of dark green and earth brown, but I guess that dress there is my favorite color, huckleberry. I'll tell you what, leave them all, and the ones I can't use, I'll send back. 
Very well. Ladies? Huckleberry. <laughs> I guess we won't need you, Emily. They've already sent a girl up to do the floor. You're new here, aren't you? Yes, I... Well, remember, we're all here to do a job, and your job is just as important as anyone else's. Oh, dear, sweet, lovely Princess Winifred, you will pass the Queen's test. You will. Gramercy, my dear, you can't possibly clean the floor with such a tiny patch. You need a good, big, wet rag. Uh, here, what's this? That's the huckleberry... Use this old thing. Just look at this mess. What will my gentle princess think of me? Can you know what it means to be a lady in waiting to the blessed Winifred? Oh, Winifred, Winifred. What name is sweeter than that? <laughs> oh, would you just look at this table? It's dripping wet. Oh, here, I'll use this. <sighs> I can't bear to see the delicate beauty of my royal mistress in such a messy place. Get that, please. Quick, 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 quick! Harry! Your Highness. Your what? Oh, how are you? Oh, get up. You don't have to go through the motions with me. Say, I'm awfully sorry about that. You know, swimming the moat. I hope I didn't make a bad impression. Oh, not at all, Your Highness. And if you'll just give your wet dress to one of the ladies in waiting, I'm sure that she will see that you're taken care of. Thank you. It's already been taken care of. Ah, I see you've met my dear Lady Larkin. You mean this is the little Larkin girl? The very same, Your Highness. Harry, she's beautiful and a bundle of energy. When I gaze upon that captivating face, I realize how poor my description must have been. Sir Harry is not very good at describing people, Your Highness. Well, he may not know how to describe them, but he sure knows how to pick them. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to return these to the fourth floor. I've never been so humiliated in my life. Well, what's the matter? I thought she was a chambermaid. What? A chambermaid. How could you mistake the princess for a chambermaid? How could I? How could you mistake that chambermaid for a princess? Don't say such a thing just because you made a stupid mistake. I made a mistake? Oh, don't you dare try to blame it on me. I do blame it on you. She was on her hands and knees scrubbing the floor. She's a real lady wherever she was. That's more than I can say for some people around here. Oh, I hate you. I hate you too. You get out. Oh, don't worry, I'm going. Goodbye. 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 You should be able to think of something that helped that what's her face to sleep. And don't forget to whip up a sleeping potion and some of that good heavy incense, the hypnotic mirror too. Wait. The most important thing is that she's tired out first. We'll have an official ball tonight and we'll make that what's her face dance until she drops. Now, what can we do? Do you know the Saracen Brawl? All right. No! It's not tiring enough. Hmm. I've got it. We'll do that new dance, the Spanish Panic. Oh, it's absolutely exhausting. We'll make that what's-her-name dance until she drops on the floor. 
Now, hello everybody. Today we'll be doing a new dance, the Spanish Panic. We'll have an official ball tonight. Everyone is to attend, so we might as well learn that new dance, the Spanish Panic. It's quite simple. It goes tango, tango, tango. Now forward, Woo! spin. Ta -da! It's right, it's really easy. Come on now. Take partners, please. All right, tango, tango. Now forward. Oh, gosh. Oh, you guys are horrible dancers. Does anyone here know the Spanish panic? We do, Your Majesty. Oh, well, thank heaven somebody is up to date around here. Why don't we all watch while court dancers Sir Harold and Lady Beatrice demonstrate? Harold and Lady Beatrice. Now, was that hard? <laughs> Take partners, please. Prepare. Question me. I know exactly what I'm doing. Of course. What's wrong? Oh, you lost her. All right, Your Majesty, I'll help you. any success. Uh, well... I've been here a whole month and he still hasn't managed to catch a ball. Tell you what, tomorrow we'll set a trap. Oh, you exaggerate. Not a bit. Someone's coming. Who? The, the queen! queen. <laughs> and don't forget to hire outside help for tonight's dancing. <laughs> and... Tell the jester I want him to perform. Not that I'd actually be able to enjoy it. That horrible pain in my back. And that strange, nagging pain in my jaw. Oh, I wonder what it's caused by. Oh, hmm. No one will ever know what I suffer. What was she jabbering about? She's going to make us do something? What? Exercise. <laughs> Who is it? Well, I don't know. <laughs> My lady, is something wrong? No. Ah, oh, well, we're glad of that anyways. I was sitting in my room sewing, and I just 
it just got a little stuffy, so I decided to come out here and get some air. And I see you were planning to camp out for a while. <laughs> oh, your majesty, you don't know. You just don't know. <laughs> Do you have any idea what could happen in the relationship between a man and a woman? <laughs> I'm glad I found out the way I did. It's better this way. I'm leaving. You're leaving? Yes, I'm leaving the service of the Queen forever. That's a pretty big step to take all alone. I have no choice. You'll need help. Who would help me? I, my lady. What did you say? You want to help the Lady Larkin. Who's going to take care of you? Chivalry demands we protect the damsel in distress. All right, your majesty, we'll help. She'll have to travel lightly, the way a man does. Yes, we can steal one of Prince Dallas's suits. Oh, I'll get these out of your sight. You can wait in your room. No, I don't need help from anyone, thank you. I can go alone. Over the wall? You'll be just fine once you get past the water rats. Rats? Yes, they live on the edges of the stagnant pools, right near the quicksand. Quicksand? Beyond the wall. <laughs> What you must climb. climb, it's 22 feet, and covered with slime, slime. and infested with spiders. spiders. Oh, the spiders are sweet compared to the snakes, snakes on the other side. Well, they won't hurt you, unless, of course, you insist on leaving alone and now. Well, I did, but if I had known it was so terrible out there... Then you'd think a second thought and come with me. I know all the secret ways to get us free, over the hills and to the open sea. Open sea, but where? Normandy. Normandy. It's April, isn't it? Normandy is fine and fair. So Normandy is where we'll go. I can show you a beach where the peach blossom blows. And I know how to a man who knows, a man who knows A cozy inn, a friendly place With rows of windows facing the sea This time of year, the air I hear Is rare and clear and warm in Normandy I know a meadow covered with mustard flowers, golden as the sun. Where a wondrous thing can happen when an April day is done. There's a moment after the sunset where the sky is suddenly green. And the world stands hushed and waiting for the first white stars to convene. When you see that emerald you see sky, that emerald sky know the and know the reason there's not another place I'd rather be. Keep your Eldorado and as well with Burgundy. Come fly with me. Come try those wings. Come, Come swift, swift, for we have things to do. See. This time of year, the air I hear is rare and clear. And don't be afraid. It's warm. Heaven was made in Normandy.
better not let the queen catch you walking. Hey, have you seen Sir Harry? He had a fight with Lady Larkin. Hey, look. He's with that French girl. She only speaks one word of English, but I hear she's a charmer. What's that one word? Yes. How's it going, Harry, old boy? Oh, uh, trade me in. After the ball, we're gonna have a little party on the West Parapet. Don't forget to bring the wine. And something to spread on the ground. Harry, ask Mabel if she'd like to come. Uh, voulez-vous? Yes! <laughs> I'm so excited. It's gonna be very fun. Come on now! You better be excited! Don't worry, don't worry. secret, but what sort of test does she usually give? Well, with Mama, it could be almost anything. Like what? Like history. Oh. Or dancing. Or spelling. Oh. Or it could be a test of strength and endurance. Huh. Like one time, she was supposed to lift this weight. She couldn't. <laughs> I can't even lift it. But I'm sure you'll pass. You don't have to worry. Do you want me to pass? I'll pass. All right. <laughs> hey, I think you're wonderful. <laughs> By the way, I don't think I ever told you. My full name is Winifred the Wobegon, but <laughs> Winifred's too formal. You can call me by my nickname. Winnie? Fred. <laughs> Fred. What a beautiful name. So straight, so strong, so you. I like you, Fred. 
I like you. You're just saying those words to be kind. No, I mean it. I like. I mean, I love you, Fred. He is out of his medieval mind. I'm perfectly sane and sound. I've never felt better in my life. Everybody, everybody, everybody come and meet my incipient wife. I'm in love with a girl named Fred. My reasons must be clear. When she shows you all how strong she is, you'll stand right up and cheer. With an F and an R and an E and a D and an F R E D, Fred. Yeah. I'm in love with a girl named Fred. She drinks just like a lord. So come sing a merry drinking song and let the wine be poured. Fill the bowls are overflowing. Raise the goblet high. With an F and an R and an E and a D and an F R E D, Fred. Yeah. I'm in love with a girl named Fred. She sings just like a bird. You'll be left completely speechless when her gentle voice is heard. I'm in love with a girl named Fred. She wrestles like a Greek. You will clap your hands and wonder at her fabulous technique. I'm in love with a girl named Fred. She dances with such grace. You are bound to sing her praises till you're purple in the face. Bravo, bravo, bravissimo, bravo. With a girl named Fred, she's musical to boot. She will set your feet a tapping when she plays upon her lute. A clever clownish witch When she does her funny pantomime Your sides are sure to split
gone quiet. She's ordered twenty mattresses, the softest and the best, and she's threatened execution if we dare disturb the rest of her very special guests. She's ordered quiet, quiet. The queen insists on quiet. She's ordered twenty mattresses, the softest and the best, and she's threatened execution if we dare disturb the rest of her very special guests. She's ordered quiet, quiet. The queen insists on quiet. She's ordered twenty mattresses, the softest and the best, and she's threatened execution if we dare disturb the rest of her very special guests. She's Please ordered quiet. Stop. Right. Blankets. Right. Mattresses. Right, right, right. Not yet. Lay low until the coast is clear. I'll get them out of here. Stop! Stop! Stop him! I see the jester. Bring him here to me. There he goes down that corridor. Bring him here now! Oh, stop what you're doing. Get over here! Get him to me. Why, oh, this is a fine kettle of fish to fry. Now, explain yourself. What is all this noise about anyway? The moment I turn my back, something outrageous is going on in the corridors. Never mind me. Harry! Stop! I knew I couldn't trust you, wretch! Now, what are you doing? What are you up to? What? <sighs> there is something going on here. What's under the mattresses? A dead body. <laughs> <laughs> Pull that away. Oh, why? What is going on here? You better explain. Explain yourselves. It's just a joke, your majesty. This boy and I, go outside and wait for me. Lancelot. <laughs> Lancelot, Lancelot. <laughs> Lady Larkin. Oh, I knew there was something going on here. Get this stuff and bring it up to what's her name's chamber. Mattresses, too. Your majesty, I... Quiet! And what are you doing in this ridiculous getup? Silence! And why weren't you at the ball last night? Your Majesty. Shut up! And what are you doing with this man? I. Sh Speak up! Your Majesty, I. Come on! I. Explain yourself! Your Majesty, I. Ah! No one will ever answer me. Were you running away? Is that it? You were running away. Larkin! Why, you low-born, ungrateful little snake! Is this the thanks I get for treating you as one of my own daughters? One of my girls running off with a musician. <laughs> Your Majesty, the Lady Larkin is innocent. I forced her to leave against her will. That's not true. Why, you low conniving? What are you doing with that man? What are you doing with that woman? You go to your room. Don't you tell me what to do, you libertine. Oh. Huh? Ah! Now, may I remind you that you are still one of my ladies in waiting. Go upstairs where you belong and get that what's her face ready for bed. And may I remind you, Sir Harry, that you are still one of my knights. Step forward, <laughs> and you relax. <sighs> I order you banish this minstrel from my kingdom. I don't want to see him ever again. 
Seximus, go to bed. I don't want you groping around in the dark all night. <laughs> and all the rest of you, listen closely. There is a little girl upstairs who's dog tired. Oh no, she said she was going to study. All right, let her study. But when she goes to bed, I want quiet. And I'm going to get quiet. If I do scream, the palace down. <laughs> quiet. The queen insists on quiet. The queen insists on queen insists on queen insists on quiet. Some. Some. S U M. Some. Summer. Summer. S U M E R. Summer. Good. <laughs> well, if Mama tests you on literature or spelling, you're sure to pass, Fred. That leaves history. History. That takes in quite a lot. Let's give it a whirl. The first chapter is called The Bravery of Prince Valdair. Valdair. Young Valdair, wishing to slay the dragon Fafner. Who? Wishing to slay the dragon Fafner. Oh yeah, Fafner, that one. Took his father's sword, Minning. Minning. Disguised as the West Wind, he goes into the forest and slays Fafner, whereupon he is enabled to understand the speech of birds. Valdair's father, Alberic, disguised as a sacred goat, tells him about the spirit of Gunther. Leah Gunther? But I thought... Did you ring for a page boy? No. You've got the wrong room, son. Aren't you Larkin? Yes, your highness. Oh, what's the matter? I... Oh, I have a suit just like that. <laughs> I am in disguise, your highness. I was running away. Oh, I see. Well, sit down and rest. Dauntless, pull up a chair. But the queen has ordered... Never mind what the queen has ordered. Just sit here. But your highness... Oh, sit down. Now then, what's this all about? <laughs> I'll just stand up there on the parapet and, and catch a chill and die, and that'll show him. Show him what? He'll be sorry. Who? Horrible Harry. <laughs> you mean big, nice Harry? Just a minute. What did you do to him? What did I do to him? Well, you must have done something. You're talking the way I did once when I was afraid to go home because I'd given my little brother a bloody lip. <laughs> it was an accident. We had a little disagreement. So you decided to run away? He said some perfectly horrible things to me. Oh, I see. Well, I guess in that case you were right. I guess about the only thing you can do is pack up and get out. Unless, of course, you just go to him and say you're sorry. Listen, that Harry is a wonderful boy and he really loves you. Why, we were on the road for two weeks and he never laid a finger on me. Oh, your highness. <laughs> now you just get into something pretty that shows you're a girl and try and patch things up with him. Oh, and Larkin, try and act a little helpless. Men don't like girls that are too strong. I do. Oh, your highness, I don't know how to thank you. If it's a girl, I'm going to name her Fred. <laughs> what if it's a boy? Dauntless, you better get to bed and leave the history book. I'm sure you'll pass Mama's test tomorrow. But if you don't, I'll understand. So, the young Prince Waldair, having slain the dragon Fafner with his sword Minning, rescued the Princess Frigga and mounted his horse Trigga and rode to the castle Wunderbar, where they were married and lived happily ever after. Well, I'm glad. Happily, happily, happily ever after. The couple is happily leaving the chapel eternally tied. As the curtain descends, there is nothing but loving and love. 
But she married a prince who was brawny and blue-eyed and blonde. I have no one but me, fairy godmother, 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 where can you be? I haven't got a fairy godmother. I haven't even gotten a godmother. I have a mother, a plain, ordinary woman. Snow White was so pretty, they tell us that the queen was insulted and jealous when the mirror declared that Snow White was the fairest of all. She was left on the border, but was saved by some men who adored her. Oh, I grant you, they were small, but there were seven of them, practically a regiment. I'm alone in the night, by myself, not a dwarf, not an elf, not a goblin in sight. That girl had seven determined little men working day and night just for her. Oh, sure, the queen gave her a poisoned apple. Even so, she lives happily, happily, happily ever after. A magical kiss counteracted the apple eventually. Though I know I'm not clever, I'll do what they tell me I have to. I want some happily ever after to happen to me. Rapunzel had platinum tresses that were double the length of her dresses. She was kept in a tower for years by a wicked old witch. To a night in despair down, she scrambled by letting her hair down. That's what I call quite a switch, I wonder. No, it'll never hold. I'll be finished before I begin. Besides, I don't want to get out. I want to get in. I want to live happily, happily, happily ever after. I want to walk happily out of a chapel eternally. You're a bully and a tyrant. Just because you won your spurs doesn't mean that you now, get Now see here. This man is charged with attempting to transport a young woman out of kingdom against her will. That's a serious offense. He didn't do it. It was a frame up. You've got it all wrong. He was protecting the Lady Larkin. And you stay out of this, your majesty. Sir Harry, I can't go just yet. There's someone I must see first. Who? The vizier. I want your permission to speak with the vizier. Yes, yes. No, permission denied. Sir Harry, you're a fathead. Yes, you are. He's trying to help. We're all trying to help. Uh, how can you help? By finding out what the test is from the vizier. That's cheating. Don't you understand? This is for you. Let me speak with the vizier. No, if anyone should defy the vizier's magic, I should. No, you must stand guard. This is my job. No, you might get hurt. You're not coming, and that's final. Well, what's the matter, Papa? The king mustn't come with us. I'll get rid of him. Your Majesty, Prince Domus is ready now. It's time to have that personal talk. Oh, some other time. Dauntless, your father wants to have that personal talk with you now. It's very important. It is? It can't be put off. Come on. Do your duty, sire. Well, what is it, Papa? What do you want to talk to me about? Stop? 
look, listen. Boy, flower, girl, flower, boy, flower, girl, flower. Oh, tell me more. I want to know about what getting married is for. Seed. Fall. From girl flower. And by and by. Baby flower. Grow. Ah, but why? Oh, tell me why. Oh, Father, tell me, tell me, Father, don't be shy. Boy flower, girl flower, love each other. Boy flower, father, girl flower, mother. Yes, yes, but how? It's very interesting, but how? Oh, tell me now. Boy flower, boy flower dust, gets on B. B flies to girl flower, dust touches girl flower. Oh, I see. No, I don't see. It's very interesting, but still not clear to me. Woman is like girl flower, man is like a bee. And like boy flower. Man, that's me. Oh, tell me more. I've got to know about what getting married is for. Carrie. Sounds like Carrie. Mary. Man and woman get married. Winifred and White. Love each other, night, and then one night. Yes, yes, one night. It's very interesting what happens in the night. What happens, what happens? Oh, tell me, Father, please. Shall I go and pick some flowers? Shall I go and catch some bees? Winifred and I will get married, love each other, night, and then one night. The stork? The stork will come and bring us a baby? Oh, Papa, I know all about the stork. Mama told me about that years ago. No, wait a minute, Papa. Flower, seed, man, woman, bee, baby, small. It isn't the stork, it isn't the stork, it isn't the stork at all. Oh, life is grand. It's very interesting. I think I understand. I think, I think I know. It's very interesting. Thank you, Father. And Father, I love you so. Pardon, Vizier. What do you want? Our friend the minstrel is a great admirer of yours. No soft soap, if you please. This is not very soft soap, and I wouldn't even say it for the fact except that I've been banished. And I hope this won't embarrass you, but I just had to tell you what a great artist you are. 
Cardamon. Cardamon? Don't call me by that name. I use that name with honor. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever forget seeing you in command in Glastonbury in 92. What a show. What a performance. You took seven curtain calls. Eight. Do you happen to remember a little boy in the second row who stood up that night and yelled, Bravo? Yes. I was that boy. I can't believe it. Of course, now I'm in show business too, and if it's any interest to you, you're, it's your inspiration that brought this about. You must belong to the guild. <laughs> Can that local 714? Do you think that someone remembers those days? <laughs> yes, well, I just had to tell you what that performance meant to me, Cardamon, and, well, I'd better get going. Uh, no! Wait a minute, Sir Minstrel, for you. Thank you. Here, have a seat. No, I don't think the queen would like it if she found out I was still here. Uh, never mind her, just sit down. This is between us. Anyways, you're probably busy for that test for tomorrow. Uh, that's quite all right. The test is well taken care of. I don't suppose you could tell an old guild brother what the test is about. Well, I'm sort of under oath. Oh, I understand. Well, I'd better get going. No! Wait a minute. May I borrow your handkerchief? What, what handkerchief? Some people say my act is pretty foul. Oh, <laughs> uh, got him on the grate. <laughs> oh, I bet you can't guess what the test is about. Astronomy? No, you'll never guess. Sensitivity. Oh, sensitivity. <laughs> Did you hear? <laughs> Cardamon the Great. Cardamon the Great, yes. <laughs> oh, now let me tell you the rest. It... No, I'd better not. Oh, I'll go. Uh, but may I ask one favor? Cardamon, can I have this? What do you want with that? A memento of the good old days, because of my father. Keep it. Oh, Jester. <laughs> Thank you. That was a wonderful thing you did for that boy, Cardamon. Well, for his father's sake. Say, I don't actually have to get out of here until daybreak. Why don't we go down to the wine cellar, crack open a bottle, and talk some more about talk some more? Oh, fine, fine. But first, I've started something here I'd like to finish. Go on ahead, and I'll be with you in two seconds. I'll be waiting. What's the matter, Jester? Oh, nothing. Say something funny. Have you heard of my father sliding Peter Jingle? <laughs> Was that funny? I don't know. I think this clown is losing his touch. I am far from sentimental or romantic, and I'd like to think I'm strictly up to date. But at times the dancing gets a bit too frantic in these hectic days of 1428. So indulge me if I pause to raise my chalice to a quaint and charming dance they used to do In the days when my dear father played the palace Back in 1392 My dad was debonair And quite as light as air in his very soft shoes How he could dip and glide And skip and slip and slide 
In his very soft shoes I used to stand And watch him every day He was always smooth and cool I used to love To hear the people say He's a regular dancing fool He barely touched the ground And never made a sound But I noticed in all his reviews That when he took his bow To the crowd and the crown The crowd went crazy And the house came down When Daddy wore his very soft shoes Friend or foe? Friend. Oh. I hope... Oh, Harry. Harry, look at me. I was trying to run away, but it was only because I thought you didn't love me. I thought you didn't love me. <laughs> but even if you don't love me, I can't love anyone but you, and I want to be near you if I can, as long as I can. Well, Harry, I don't blame you if you've changed. Well, in a way I have. Yesterday I loved you as never before. But please don't think me strange. I've undergone a change. And today I love you even more. My heart cannot be trusted I give you fair warning I openly confess Tonight I love you less Than I will tomorrow morning. Yesterday I loved you As never before But that was long ago And now it's best you know that today I love you even more My heart cannot be trusted I give you fair warning I tremble at your touch Not nearly half as much as I would Yesterday you seemed as lovely to me As anyone ever could be Now I see what tricks my eyes can play Yesterday I must have been utterly blind Or else I was out of my mind For I find you so much lovelier today My heart cannot be trusted I give you fair warning For yesterday I loved you As never before But that was In a little while I will see your smile And now it's best to know That today I love you even more My heart cannot be trusted 
I give you fair warning, I openly confess. Tonight I love you less than I will to. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. That should do it. And one small pea that I had to bring all the way up from the pantry, all the way up the most grueling stairs in the kingdom. Never mind that. There. Perfect. All right, come in now. I'm all ready. Did you bring everything? Yes, madam. The hypnotic mirror. And the sleeping potion, of course. You have all the things, thank you. And the girl, the, where's the girl? Doesn't she know it's long past her bedtime? You would think she'd be dropping from exhaustion. Oh, <laughs> it's you. You must be sure to get a good night's rest for your trip back to your kingdom or wherever you're going. Bring the hypnotic mirror. And where's the incantation? The wizard said it should be written right on there. <sighs> Silking, swishing semblance, wraps us in a gentle trance. Deep in Morpheus' arms we lie, off we go to Betty, bye. You know, I think I'm getting a star right here. <sighs> Bring the puppy and mandragora incense. Drowsy incense, sweet aroma. <coughs> Wraps us in a gentle coma. Murmuring voices seem to say, Mr. Sandman's on his way. <sighs> that ought to get us to sleep, shouldn't it? The sleeping drought. I always say, drink a little extract of opium and warm milk before going to bed. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> drink it down, drink it down, drink it down. Oh! <laughs> You've got it all over yourself. <sighs> Gosh. Now, that ought to get you to sleep. I wish I could say the same for myself. But to be sure you have no trouble drifting off, I've prepared for you a special surprise. Bring out the Nightingale of Samarkand. Who has the Nightingale of Samarkand? Naturally, I have to do everything myself. Sing! Ah! Stop! I brought you here to put a live princess to sleep, not wake a dead one. Let's have a lullaby, Birdie. Nice and soft. to have a good night's rest. Good night, dear. Hope you sleep well.
the top. Sheep, I'm ready when you are. One, two, three, four. Mother fix it. Leave me alone, Mama. I can dress myself. Well, far be it for me to interfere. I can do it. <sighs> Why are you wearing that so early in the morning anyway? Today's the test, Mama. I want to look my best. The test? Why, Dauntless? The test is already over. Huh? The test is over, darling boy. But, Mama, when was it? What was it? It was last night we put her to bed on 20 soft downy mattresses with a pea underneath the bottom one. Of course, the pea would have kept a real princess awake. And she slept? Well, I'm sure I don't know, but she was practically falling asleep before she got into bed and yawning like a vulgar scholarly maid. I mean, she looked old enough to be your ma... Well, I'm sure I don't know. Oh, darling. Oh, Fred. Control yourself. They'll be here any minute. If she didn't pass, I'll just jump in the moat. Oh. Don't talk. Here comes the queen. Now, don't worry, darling. One day we'll find you a true princess, but you have me, and that's all you need. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning Your Majesty. Majesty. Your Majesty. Here to see the princess on her way. Well, since she's such a favorite of ours, I've decided to give her an extra special consolation prize. Sir Studley. A very charming, thoughtful gift, Your Majesty. Charming. Oh. 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 Don't Liz. Now, where's our little slug bed? She should be getting an early start. Oh, here she is. And not even dressed yet. You must have slept like a baby. 37,428. 37,428? What? Sheep, why do you stuff your mattresses with jousting equipment? <laughs> what do you mean? I mean that bed ought to be moved out to the torture chamber. You didn't sleep? I never shut my eyes. You passed. Passed what? The test. Mama put a pee under 20 mattresses and you felt it and now we can be married. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Hooray, my love married at last, at last. A pee 
under 20 mattresses? No wonder I'm black and blue. Now, don't you think she's pretty? No, she's not pretty. She's beautiful. 20 mattresses, huh? Dauntless, dear, I'll leave the wedding arrangements up to you. And you better start looking around for a small kingdom for us. I've got a feeling we aren't going to want to live with the in-laws. <laughs> oh. She's going to get cold sleeping on the floor. I'd better take her up to her wait. room. Wait! What should I wait for, Mama? To give this matter proper consideration, of she course. She passed the test, and I'm going to take her up to her room. I said wait! Now, you listen to your mother throughout this heartbreaking process of trying to find you a true princess. I've never nagged, never interfered, and never asked for one solitary word of sympathy. Shh, Mama, she's asleep. But I will not stand by and watch you throw yourself away for this little nobody. Mama, quiet. I mean, she may have passed the test, but I say I will never trust anyone with those horrible, uh, horrible eyes and that uh, gaping, horrible mouth. I told I you to <gasps> shut up! <gasps> it happened. It happened. The prophecy. The mouse devoured the hawk. And, and look, the queen can't talk. I. Uh, <gasps> I uh, you uh, what? I can't. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> and I have a lot to say. Well, good night. Unhand the boy. Now, Agravain, you've asked for it, and now you're going to get it. When I say hop, I want you to hop. Hop. Skip. Jump. It wasn't the pee! It wasn't the pee!